Hello everybody, Jonathan Pulley here with West Coast Weather. Today is February 20th. We got quite a bit to talk about today. We got multiple frontal systems coming in. We're getting out of this cold, the cold um, Arctic air pattern that we had with many chances of snow and stuff. And we're finally warming back up with temperatures in the 50s for a lot of the Pacific Northwest on um, the last couple of days, except parts of eastern Washington, Oregon. Um, First, uh, first off, if I'm sounding weird, I'm getting over a cold right now, so sorry about if my voice sounds a little weird, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it in this video anyways. But we got an atmospheric river coming, and we also got windstorm potential early next week, so we got a lot to talk about. So um, getting right in the things, we're looking at the general ridge and trough positions, high pressure, low pressure, um, way up in the atmosphere helps us see where generally where storms and stuff are. And this is looking at Washington, Oregon, California. Hawaii is way down here. This is the, the eastern Pacific Ocean down here. Here's Mexico over here, just so you know where we're looking at. So if we play this out right now, this is this afternoon. So we've got a ridge over us, but there's some clouds around from our uh, weather system that moved through yesterday, some remnant moisture over the area. But as you see, we got this next storm system coming in later Friday and the Saturday, that's again be bring some precipitation, maybe some um, breezy winds as well. Then another system, it's going to clip us a little closer than the the one on Friday. This comes in later on um, Sunday. Um, and this has potential to bring some locally strong winds to some areas, but the main low pressure system will go up towards Haida Gwaii. But watch, watch right down here though. This is this is our European wall. Look at that! Boom! This a uh, a. Uh, 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 Mid-latitude cyclone forms right off of this a lobe of cold air that's over the Gulf of Alaska and goes right in the Vancouver Island. This is going to be uh, this has got some serious windstorm potential, and I'll show you guys here in uh, a few minutes um, some of the specifics on some of the wind speeds and stuff that models are showing. But this is a pretty intense storm that's getting relatively close to us, so we're going to have to really watch that. But then um, it looks like we'll start the dry out as we go through that. That's later on Monday. And then as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, we got a ridge of high pressure building over us. This could last all the way from the middle of next week into next weekend. So we definitely, um, the, uh, we're likely to probably warm up during this. But then there's a potential for some systems to start clipping out under that after a couple of weeks from now so but we'll look at that later that's that's really far off in the future now looking at precipital water anomalies so precipital water is just basically a measurement of how much moisture there is in the atmosphere so we're looking at anomalies so these reds are high moisture normal than and more uh, higher than normal blues are dry drier than normal so you can see that we're gonna get this first frontal system that moves through bringing lots of moisture in the area on Friday. But look at this, we got this pretty strong atmospheric river. This is gonna be about a Cat 2, Cat 3 atmospheric river. Um, some models have shown an even stronger atmospheric river than that. This will be bringing some very heavy moisture and we'll be hitting the Pacific Northwest for multiple days this weekend. So this is gonna be a very rainy weekend. But look at this on the tail end of that atmospheric river, look at this. This cyclone just forms right along it, right off of Vancouver Island and the Washington coast. So exactly where this storm goes is going to really depend as um, give us varying impacts. If it goes further north, we're not going to get as strong winds. If it goes right into the Washington coast, we could get a region, a major region wide windstorm. So we'll look at that in a bit. So right now we're looking at um, the atmospheric river forecast. This is let's look at the European model here right now. So this is looking at the uh, atmospheric river forecast for the next seven days. So you can see, um, looking right now, this is this weekend, you can see that we're starting to get close to a cap, we're getting into the cap four atmospheric river territory for parts of Oregon. However, Washington, Southwest British Columbia are also gonna get hit, but the main moisture plume is gonna go in the Southwest Washington and Oregon. And you can see, um, this is how atmospheric rivers are scaled. So you can get exceptional, extreme, strong, moderate, weak, and not an AR. So atmospheric rivers are, are measured by duration and the strength of the moisture. So the higher the moisture and the longer that the moisture lasts over an area, the stronger the atmospheric river. So we're gonna have a pretty long atmospheric river lasting about over two days. The moisture is going to be kind of moderate, so it's going to be last. It's going to be a Cat Four atmospheric river because it's going to be lasting quite a while. So that just kind of gives some insight on how we forecast atmospheric rivers in their categories. 
Um, so now looking at six hour precipitation type in inches in sea level pressure in millibars. Those are those little isobars. Those are lines of constant pressure. So you can see that the 1024 millibar line, you can see that 1000 millibar line way up here north of Haida Gwaii. So, so we play this out, you can see we, we're kind of dry until tomorrow morning, Friday, as that frontal system moves through. Um, then it, we turn the showers later, Friday and the Saturday morning. Then the atmospheric river plows in, and it's going to have kind of two phases. So it's going to move in on uh, like Saturday, late Saturday morning into Saturday evening. Then it's going to move through. But however, Oregon's going to continue to be stuck in this plume of moisture, which is why it's going to be getting a Cat 4 at Cirque River. Then this low pressure system will ride up later on Sunday, bring another surge of moisture in the West, Washington and Southwest British Columbia and some snow to the very high terrains of the mountains. Unfortunately, these atmospheric rivers tend to be pretty warm, so there's not going to be a ton of mountain snow um, for lo lower areas of the mountains. Then we get that through. There's going to be some showers and potential for some thunderstorm action, which I'll show you here in the moment. Here comes our, that atmospheric river ends, but quickly on its heels on Monday, look at this powerful cyclone that moves right into um, the Vancouver Island area as a 979 millibar low. Malls are switching around a bit, but this is a very tight pressure gradient, which would uh, mean pretty strong winds moving over Western Washington, especially the coastlines as well. However, the, the European Mall yesterday afternoon was showing this a little closer, which I'll show you here later in this video. So stick around for probably another four or five minutes. I'll show you that. So that cyclone moves up and then we may get another clip by some more moisture late next week. But then that ridge of high pressure built in and we dry out for multiple days straight and potential for some weak systems after that. So we're in have to really watch that as we go and now looking at six uh, this is lightning flash density for the last six hours so if we play this out this is showing us where the model kind of thinks that there's going to be the potential for some thunderstorm action you can see that it starts coming in with the system on friday the uh, late saturday evening and the sunday morning you can see that there's some blues that start showing up over Western Washington. I think this is a, a partly due to a convergent zone that may form over parts of Whidbey Island, the northern Puget Sound later Saturday evening. So just a watch out for that. It's not the biggest threat, but look at on the Sunday afternoon. Look at this. This is a lot of blue. This is a lot, a pretty strong signal for lightning over parts of Western Washington, even southwest British Columbia as well. As that low pressure system moves north towards Haida Gwaii, there's going to be a lot of instability behind that it's cold front that will lead to um potential for thunderstorm action look at this dark blue that sets up right over Whidbey island skagit county um and, and parts maybe parts of whatcom county this is a likely a strong convergence zone that could potentially set on sunday evening as well so we may get two evenings of convergence zones so definitely going to be some active weather look at this there's even chances for more on monday as that cyclone moves in it these cyclones can bring a lot of instability and wind shear a lot. That's basically when you get changing wind speeds and direction as you go up in the atmosphere. And that kind of creates some spin and helps those thunderstorm updrafts to be a little stronger. So it's kind of a complicated process, but there's a, that's a little hint to how it works. So now looking at total precipitation in inches, I'm going to play this out until Tuesday morning. So this is about five days out, right after that, our last that cyclone moves through. Look at this. This is a lot of rain. Like we're going to be getting um, over a half a foot of rain in some of the mountains. It's in Vancouver Island, even showing up with some isolated locations of the 10 inches. Look at that. You can see even the Oregon, Oregon Cascades and coastal mountain ranges in the Willamette Valley getting multiple inches. Um, Portland, Seattle are li likely to get a, probably one to th like one and a half to three inches of rainfall. You can see rain shadowing over Whidbey Island if you look closely right here, where the rain shadows over Squim, Port Angeles, Port Townsend. But you guys could even get an inch or more of rain as well. So it, that's also going to cause issues. If it, so, let's go before that windstorm comes in. There's going to be lots of rain before that cyclone comes in, and that's going to lead to saturated ground. So when you get strong winds and you get saturated ground and can trees can get uprooted more easily and stuff so we're gonna, that's going to be another thing we're going to really have to watch thankfully we haven't got a lot of rain last month so the chances of, of trees getting uprooted wouldn't be as bad and there's going to be potential for some river flooding, which i'll mention here in a second as well also some snow for the higher terrain as well southwest bc is going to get hammered with a feet of snow up there in those mountains whistler should be doing good as well but not that too much for the cascades of washington oregon now looking at the river forecast you can see um 
over the next 10 days, some of the rivers are likely to start reaching action slash bank full stage. A couple um, rivers, uh, like the Chehalis River, I'm pretty sure, have the potential to get the minor flood stage. So just be careful if you're around some of the rivers and keep a, an eye on river forecasts as some of them can get close to the flood stage over this weekend. So now look at this cinnamon roll that we got, an atmospheric cinnamon roll. I really, I like cinnamon rolls and I like atmospheric cinnamon rolls too. Um, so this is the cyclone. This is what the European model showed. The, it, it, this is the simulated satellite imagery. So what the model kind of thinks that that storm it, it, it is going to look like. Look at this. This is a perfect example of a, a, a mid latitude cyclone. And you can see this would be the, where the strongest winds would be right along the sting jet, the bent back occlusion. That's basically where all the lit, with strong winds from the jet stream aloft get kind of pinched um, down behind the storm. It's a, kind of a complicated process, but that's kind of how it works. And you get these super strong winds on the backside. Exactly where that goes is going to have a really big impact on how strong the wind speeds will get. And let's look at the wind speeds now. That's just one model. This is all just one model model showing this, but I want to show you some of the, the different scenarios. So this is this morning's run. You can see some breezy winds um, this weekend and with multi, all these weather systems gusts up over 40 to 50 miles per potentially for lots of northwest Washington, parts of the coastline, maybe maybe even parts of the Willamette Valley, but it should be that short of winds. Then we get the system on Sunday bringing more blustery winds to a lot of the area. But look at the cyclone coming in. Look at this. These are wind gusts over 70 to 80 miles per hour just off the shore. You can see gusts are starting to approach over 60 along the coastlines. You can see some 50s approaching inland. I'll show you a closer look here in a second. Um, but you can see that cyclone doesn't really get too close. So thankfully, those 80 mile per hour winds don't go into the western Washington, Oregon. But if we look at um, closely, this is accumulated wind gusts. So this is showing the max wind gusts over this entire period. So it basically just accumulates it on top of one another. You can see the max wind gusts on this model for the ne next five days or so. You can see even it's some mid 60s showing up, even a little bit of 70 mile per hour winds showing up there towards um, Nia Bay and La Push. So if this comes any closer, we're going to be dealing with the potential for a very um, strong windstorm. But you can see even gusts of 50 miles per hour could cause problems over a lot of the area. You can see some gusts approaching 60 miles per hour up towards Whidbey Island and the San Juans as well. However, let's look at another scenario. This is the European model from yesterday afternoon. These are showing wind gusts that are already happening this weekend. But look at this. Wow. The, look at how it brings the cyclone right into the Washington coastline. Look at this. These are gusts up for 70, 80 miles per hour for parts of Whidbey Island and the San Juans. This would be a very, this would be a destructive windstorm. And thankfully, models aren't exactly sure what's going to happen. It looks like models have started trending a little further north and away from us, but some models are still showing potential for some stronger solutions. So this is why we need to watch this very closely. You can see some gusts approaching 80. 80 plus miles per on the coastlines as well. You can see approaching 55 at Seattle, 50s for the Willamette Valley in Portland, and uh, uh, 60s along the Oregon coast. So definitely something we really need to watch. Now, look at temperatures over the next. This is minimum temperatures. You can see we may get below freezing out east later today. But look at this. We finally get to get start the low temperatures start getting out of the 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 30s and below freezing. Look at this, even low temperatures on Sunday with the atmospheric river just moving through, bringing that warm air. Look at these are minimum low temperatures up towards into the low 50s. So it's gonna be kind of, kind of toasty, quote unquote toasty over the next few days. Now looking at um max temperatures, 50s. Even approaching, so look at Spokane starting to get into the 50s next week. This is Monday in the, in the next week. Look at this. Even some 60s potentially for Portland and Seattle looking kind of likely for a couple days next week. So definitely warmer temperatures next few weeks. Now look at the 6 to 10 day temperature, like February 25th through March 1st. Yeah, we're already approaching March. Above average temperatures expected over much of the western part of the country as we keep getting that warm Pacific air moving over the region. However, we may start to dry off as that ridge of high pressure starts building in, but you can see we're kind of uh, kind of near normal potentially for parts of Washington, which is still plenty of precipitation this time of the year. If we go over the 8 to 14 day temperature out, like this is February 27th through March 5th, going into the first week of March, generally above normal temperatures looks to still be favorable. 
but below average starts creeping back in the area but we also saw it in the models that i just showed a little bit ago that there's some weak system that are going to be moving through likely during this time frame so we'll just continue to look at this as we go this is just hinting generally we look this state above normal um uh, warmth wise over the next couple of weeks maybe below average precipitation as we go into the very end of february and the early march but that's still a ways out so anyways Thank you everybody for watching this video. I tried to get all the information out as fast as I can. Sorry about it if my voice sounds kind of weird. Thankfully, I'm on the tail end of being sick. We're looking at satellite imagery right now. You can see our next system starting to form over the Pacific Ocean north of Hawaii. This will bring heavy moisture in the area and we'll have our atmospheric river right behind this as well. And then we got the wind storm potential on Monday. We got thunderstorm potential for a couple days this weekend as well. So uh, lots of fun weather to talk about. Nothing too serious this week. Weekend. Monday has the potential to be serious, but some a lot of models don't show it being that bad. So just going to continue to watch that. So anyways, I hope everybody found this video enjoyable and informative. Um, please hit the like button, subscribe buttons down below. If you don't mind, that helps the channel out and helps um, me reach uh, more people. And uh, I love doing these forecasts and helping you guys prepare for your, your, your weekend or whatever it is. So anyways, take care. God bless. And I'll talk to everybody in the next forecast video.